What's up guys, welcome back to another Two Point Perspective video. So if you guys watched the last video, you know that this one is going to be part one of a two part series. <clears throat> and what we're doing in this video is we're gonna just draw from photo reference to um, utilize it, take inspiration from it, but ultimately create our own picture. So I'm just gonna kind of jump straight into this and talk as I go, because I have a lot to set up here. Um, so first off, I chose my references, okay? Um, I said for you guys, one to three, I went for four, uh, mainly because when I was looking around, I stumbled upon this picture right here, and I just really like this setup of the extreme foreground. Really kind of just, for me, it sets up that whole um, feeling of perspective that we're trying to give, right? Where I know she's right here in the immediate foreground and then everything is all in the background behind her. And perspective is all about showing space and distance and things overlapping and buildings in front of the other. So I just really like the feeling that this picture just got straight off the bat. And also it's just a beautiful picture, right? Um, a couple of the other references I picked, I just liked this one. Oops, here we can zoom in on some of these guys. So I like this one. Um, just because this was a nice overall city view, pretty standard two-point perspective. I like that you can see two street sides here. You know, um, ideally, if I'm looking at trying to make something like the picture below, which was something like that, I can even come in here now and think about what would it look like if there was that um, that foreground, that forefront, right, where a person could stand, or I could have a light post like that one picture. So these are the kind of ideas I'm trying to like work in my head, like what can I make from these? Um, and how can I combine these? I, the architecture in this is pretty nice too. I like that kind of simplistic window, modern look there. Um, these other two, I got this one, not so much for the building, um, but I've always been interested in buildings that have, and this might just sound completely random, but have bridges that are going across them don't know why it's just been something that's always fascinated me so I thought if I'm gonna make a picture of my own in a city of my own I might as well try to incorporate something like that maybe it'll fit maybe it won't but I got that reference there in case I need it okay and then my last one um, again I chose this one just as an aesthetic thing if you guys can see this has a nice overhang right here and I really like that overhang concept where like this it's just this huge chunk of this building that you get to walk underneath. Um, I just think that's so interesting and like it's just an architectural fascination of mine um, that they can do that. It's like, I mean, maybe it's the perspective of this picture, ironically, but it looks like it's like half the building is hanging over and like you can walk underneath it and just thinking about the weight that they had to balance. Uh, I can go on, but anyways, so, these are my four pictures that I chose to reference, so I have them off to the side there. Um, I'm not going to be using this entire canvas, because remember when I was talking about two-point perspective, we want our vanishing points to be off our paper. So if we're doing traditional, you're going to need two more pieces of paper, at least, to extend your vanishing points off the paper. So for me, I gave myself a frame, and this white section is going to be my paper because I'm working digitally so I can just zoom in and potentially see what it would look like, right? And then I can always take this and crop it and I would have my picture. Um, <clears throat> so for me, I'm gonna have vanishing points that are somewhere, I'm thinking somewhere off here, but um, we'll, be, we'll see what happens when I'm placing my stuff. Kind of going into this blind, so it's a little nerve wracking because I don't really know what's gonna happen. My drawing could come out like total crap, <laughs> but we're gonna see what happens. Um, all right, so I guess I'm just going to jump straight into it. And what I'm doing today is the, why the reason this is going to be part one and part two is this is going to be about figuring out and blocking in our, our first part of our drawing. And then the second part will be about how do I go about adding details and giving unique characteristics to buildings and what can I add? Should I add cars? Um, should I add streams of light like going over here or like what am, what's to add, right? So that's when we'll talk about that. So now going back to it, this was my main inspiration. And if I'm gonna f 
look at this picture, but I'm going to think about it in a wide frame, right? So landscape. So, but I still want the same feeling. I really like this shot. I can definitely tell the photographer is on his knees and he has the camera pointed a little bit up at her because I can see the building is still going down. Even all the way here, those lines of the building are going downwards, which means that we have a very low set horizon line. And if I'm, if I'm seeing it correctly, the horizon line's about right there, right below the model's waist there. Um, so you can see that we have less paper down here, more up here, right? Um, it's not a super low horizon line, but it is on the lower side, whereas like usually when you have a figure or something in your picture, you're probably going to see most artists line the horizon up with their eye level. Um, so it has a really nice interest to this that it's a little bit lower. So break my ruler tool out here. By the way, this program switched the ruler tool on me, and now it only works if I have my fingers on my tablet. It used to work with the pen too, so if I get confused, just know that I am learning again this program. It's the minor little switches that they do. Okay, um, I think I like that. I'm just going to do a little line real quick and move this and see. So a little less down here, a little more up there. I think that's good. I think I'll go with that. Let's see what happens. Okay, so I'm just going to get rid of that line too and redraw it in there. Like so. Okay, so I'm going to draw it all the way across. I want it to be nice and thick. I'm working digitally and I'm working in different colors, so I can always get rid of this and push it back. If you guys are just using a pencil, I highly recommend you draw this lightly. At least draw that lightly on your paper here. You can draw it darker over here because that's going to be on another piece of paper. But you're going to erase this at some point when you're finished with your drawing. So don't make it too dark that you can't erase it, okay? Um, you know what? Even looking at this, I'm like, I want a little bit of a switch. I'm going to move it down a little bit just to there. I really want that horizon line to be lower okay <clears throat> i'm happy with that <clears throat> excuse me um so now i want to think about my vanishing point so i can turn that guy off for a second let me grab a red and let's see i think it would be fun to do something where <clears throat> Maybe the vanishing point is closer to the paper on this side and get a little bit of distance on this side. So I'm putting that almost all the way to the edge there, or pretty much on the edge. Um, so let's see if we can play with this concept here. All right. So I have my, my stuff set up. Um, if you're wondering, I use green and red just because they contrast against each other nicely. And I can really see my vanishing point and my horizon line. And I can turn them off and on whenever I want. Um, what I'm actually going to do is lower them down a little bit so they don't distract too much for me. And now I'm going to go into my um, pre-drawing. So what I'm going to do here um, might seem a little strange just in terms of what we've been talking about with perspective, but because this is going to be my own complete original drawing, I'm going to ignore the vanishing point and the horizon line for a second. And I'm just going to do some like light sketches on my paper and try to figure this out. Because um, I don't exactly know what I want yet. Maybe I want a figure that is sticking from over here. So I'm trying to think of trying to really think of that like if I want that foreground street what is it going to be looking like and I'm kind of just eyeballing my um, vanishing points right now I don't want to get too stuck to them is essentially what I'm going for so I think if I lower this a little bit we're only going to see a little bit of that foreground 
that's going to give me more room for a city in the back. This is kind of, you know, this is the exciting part of what's going on in my head, right? Where I'm figuring this out, but probably boring um, as I'm not talking very much. But what we can talk about while I'm doing this, I'm just kind of trying to figure this out for myself. Um, you guys can definitely follow along with me. I have no problem with that. But what would really benefit you at the end of the day is if you got your own reference pictures and were drawing your own original picture. Um, it's always going to be more helpful for you to have to figure out your own problems instead of watching me just figure out my problems in terms of what's on my paper and then me solving it and you just kind of copying it because um, you're not problem solving on your own right and so that way you're not actually figuring out the solution you're just hearing me figure out the solution so <clears throat> where it is helpful to see problem solving um, you're going to memorize it better if you actually have these scenarios on your own. Even though they can be very frustrating, I know. A lot of people have a hard time accepting that they kind of have to take a step of defeat sometimes. Let yourself have the problem so that way you can kind of solve and fix it. Um... Okay, I'm liking this so far. So let's see, what if there was like a street light here of some sort? And it could even be going off into the street this way a little bit. Be kind of following down the perspective there. And that could, if I force it, that could lead to one coming in here. It would be off the page a little bit, but it would be like a nice overlapping big shape there. Okay. And then I could have... So you guys can't see, this is my sidewalk down here. Or what might be my sidewalk. This stuff is all going to get corrected, right? I'm just... This is very loosey-goosey right now. But... um. My sidewalk, and I'm thinking I want whatever this building is going to be, I want it to be this guy right here. I want it to have that overhang. <clears throat> and, you know, so that could look something, let's see. Let's draw it a little darker. It's going to go somewhere off to there. Come back to that vanishing point. So we can do that. Yeah. Something like that. Maybe not so long with that nose. Um, okay. I like that. And then there could be a building here. This could be one of the buildings that has maybe that, that bridge that I want. Right? Sometimes what happens with two-point perspective is you can get kind of trapped where you drew a building like this, right, where this building's a little bit shorter if I'm looking at this one, right, compared to taller skyscraper buildings, of course. Um, but there's this gap of space here, and realistically, there's still a city going on back here. So you want to think about um, what kind of buildings would be back there. You could draw, like, you know, just like simple house structures. You can draw... Whatever, maybe you can even draw like a silhouette of a city in the background, like a city skyline. You could figure it out later, but you can have kind of like further away building. Be interesting. Do I want 
this to be. So this can be, maybe it comes in here. <laughs> Sorry guys, I'm totally just figuring it out. This is all just an imagination and breakdown right now. Um, but if you're into your own picture too, then you should be good. You should be having the same situation I'm having where we're just kind of figuring it out as we go. Alright, I think I like this a lot, at least for a basic setup right now, and I can come in and start cleaning up this line. My question is, like, do I want someone standing against this pole, maybe? Sitting off like this, like they're leaning off of it. Maybe they got their hands crossed, or maybe a cool story element could be they like smoking a cigarette. Turn him into a cowboy. <laughs> hmm. We'll hold on to that idea. Um, this isn't a figure drawing class. I know. <laughs> uh, we're not. I'm not really here to talk about figures. It adds a lot to the story, though, if you put people and cars and vehicles in your town. You know. So I could also even, if this is a city street, I have a street lamp here. Um, there'd probably be another street lamp coming this way maybe over here whatever it is right so then you know I could totally have a car parked here just waiting at the light you know whatever it is um, this is where the perspective gets kind of fun too because if I was going to have a car here and someone is this big now in the foreground that I'm saying that means that a car I wouldn't do this because this would cover up the whole picture but the car coming in would be covering the picture so something like something like that big in the window you can definitely see the person like that <laughs> but anyways we won't do that because then it's gonna, we're gonna lose all that architecture and buildings and perspective. Um, okay, maybe we'll keep the person, maybe not. All right, what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna grab a darker color, I'll make a new layer for myself. Um, if you were drawing with pencil, this is hope you would have drawn all this stuff very lightly, or you could have done it in a blue pencil or a red pencil or any color, different color. From what you're actually going to draw this in and now i'm going to grab myself a dark gray and i'm going to draw on top so you can see if i press harder it gets nice and dark right kind of like a, just like a pencil um and my goal here is to just kind of define some of these lines and break out my ruler boom oh that was supposed to be better time there we go and I'm going to fix up my lines now and I'm going to bring things to my vanishing point. Um, for me, I want to, let's see, I want this to be a little brighter and the, the uh, reference pictures are a little distracting for me at the moment. I don't need the references too much because um, the details that come later and the references are mainly to help me with the detail and it helped me in the beginning with placement but now I have my illustration so I don't need the the reference anymore because now my own original drawing is already set off right it's it's time to let myself my brain take over um, so I'm gonna get rid of those guys so I can focus on where the vanishing points are here and I'm gonna come in now with my ruler and figure this out so let's see. For me, the most important thing is fitting in this foreground element. So let's see if I can make that work the way I want it to. Okay. So that means this is the best time I'm going to get it. Make sure I'm on that right layer. 
so. You're still drawing light at this point because you still want to give yourself that leeway to come in and make those changes that you might not, um, that you might want to, you know, that you don't want to keep if there's stuff in there. Sorry, I got two sides of my brain working at the same time. One's trying to talk and one's trying to draw. Let's see how that looks if I make this header. I think it'll look better if it was up here. Yeah, that makes that street look too narrow to me. Okay, so I think then I will go with somewhere where my original line is kind of placed. Oh, oh. Yeah, there we go. Erase that a little bit. Um, I can fix this line. No, sign that's probably distracting some of you guys to not complete that line. Um, okay. Before I get into curb thickness and everything, I want to figure out the rest of my picture. I don't want to. Um, lose where I am. Okay, so if this curb is here, that means that the other one, if it's directly across the street, right, it has to follow this same line. Okay, so that means that, like, I'll erase this, but it means that I have to find the curb on this side of the street somewhere where this red line is. I have to decide. Um, where I want it to be, where I think it would fit. So let me get back to my gray. And I'm looking, I think, yeah, I want my building to be about there. So it looks like I could stay somewhere around here. It's fine. How does that look so far? Hmm. I think I would like both of these better if it was higher. So now what I'm going to do is come in and reposition. This is what I'm talking about, right? Where it's like, don't let yourself commit to anything too early because you're going to want changes. So it doesn't distract me. And then, okay, I just drew this line all the way over so it's easier for me to see. Um, okay, that looks better with that line closer to the horizon line to me. And so now I'm going to decide where I want this to go. Now, if you think about this, so this is an intersection, right? So I'm seeing one, I'm seeing two, and three corners of this intersection, but there's another one that exists over here, right? But we're not actually going to see that one because that one is outside of our viewpoint. But it's important to know that it's still there because sometimes that might help you with figuring things out because you want to be thinking about, like, if I had to draw that, would this still work? This will be good. Let's draw it and see what it looks like. When it comes to doodling in, I can be quick, but when it comes to being precise with the ruler, I slow down a lot. But it's good because I'm trying to take my time and really make this look 
how I want, right? So it's not a bad thing. Just let yourself slow down a bit. What I'm actually questioning for myself is if I even want this curve in there. Because right here, it's creating a tangent. Um, a tangent is something in art, too, where two lines are kind of converging too perfectly at one point. So you can see, and there, it's causing like a tension. It's causing the viewer's um, interest of, on their page of where their eye is going to feel that tension. So if you can see right there where I circled it, these lines are almost, almost, almost touching. And it's causing a tension in the picture, essentially, right? And so because of that, it takes it, it grabs the the viewer's eye point and it's kind of like they start thinking like oh like why did this happen how come this isn't overlapping or how come this isn't better lined up or um, so for me I'm just thinking I don't know maybe I can make this work if I Just for right now, I want to try my best. It might not be worth keeping the curb, but I want to try my best to keep the curb in somewhat just because I want that point where I can throw that street sign on there. Because I like that concept in the. the um, oh, you know what? That wouldn't work because I have to take it lined up with the street corner. Hmm. Okay, I'm going to keep it for now where I had it, and we're just going to kind of rock that tangent for a second, and if I can think of some way to fix it, I'll do it, but let me get to the rest of the drawing. <clears throat> All right, um, now I want to draw in some of my building. So we have to remember, this is a city, it has a sidewalk for walking paths, so the building can't be all the way to the edge where the road is, um, you need to keep the, the building has to be inward a little bit, right? So like, for instance, what I'm saying is I have my corner of my street right here, but I can't have my building come straight up from here, because then that means my, my building would be right there on the road, and there would be no place for people to walk, um, which there are definitely times where buildings are right there alongside the road, but we're going to be friendly. I'm going to build a city where people can walk in. So for me, I'm going to build probably right here. It has to still make contact right below that horizon line. OK, I think that's good. And you don't want to line it up straight with the corner. By the way, anyways, even if it's behind, you don't. you still don't want to put it here. Because when things go further back in perspective, they're going to go to one way or the other, a little bit off to the side. Okay. Let me see if one of my references actually, because that's probably confusing. Um, okay. It's hard to see the sidewalk on this one. If you can see, uh, the other fish struck. Okay, so if you can see, this the sidewalk is like right here. Okay, if I can draw this zoomed in, and then see how. So this is the corner, right here. Oh, come and draw for me. There we go. And then the building's corner is here. You guys see that? Because when it moves back in space, it doesn't line up perfectly with the corner. Unless the photographer's goal was taking this corner lined up perfectly with this corner. But this is just kind of like a candid shot. And since we're trying to recreate what we might see, if we were to take a candid shot, we're trying to make our drawing look like a photograph of something, right? We're trying to cheat that perspective. Um, then we want to keep those principles in mind. Okay, so let me turn that back off. So this is all I have so far. This is three corners. And we're going to keep going. Um, 
perspective for me is a very slow process. I know some people that are very quick at it, um, and that's cool, but it's a very precise precision thing for me. I like to take my time and think about it, um, but you might be really quick at it, and that that's perfectly fine. Okay, so now I just need to kind of line this up with my vanishing point with this ruler. It just snaps into place. Okay, I'd say that's good. Draw. There you go. All right. Move that guy. Oops. <coughs> Not much. There we go. Erase, erase, erase. Okay. Um. Let's see now. So now I gotta do the other side of the street. Ooh, turn that guy off. Gotta make sure I have my vanishing point in view here. And let's try our best to post whatever we can. <laughs> Come on, man. I might just have to free draw this one because I don't know if this is gonna work for me. <laughs> this ruler just snaps right into place. Like I try to move it just a little tiny bit and it's don't do it. Oh there it goes. Okay. I'm just gonna free draw this one. Um okay, so my vanishing point is there. I don't personally recommend free drawing. Because you want, you know, again, this is like, it's a city that was built by an, or not a whole city, it was built by one architect, but these buildings were built by an architect, which is a very strict and formatic kind of art form, which you're kind of recreating now in your own picture. So in order for it to look best and architectural and building-like and structural and like it would actually stand up and hold its weight, you want to use some structure. You want to use some straight lines, and the ruler is the best way to go. Um, okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and put in the edge of my building here. I'm gonna make it a little, a little smaller than I had it. Let's maybe turn the size down a little bit on this pen. It's getting kind of fat. Um, the reason I'm doing that is because I know when I actually line this up, I'm not gonna have the exact same portions that I did in my doodle. Okay. So you see that it goes right off the top of the page there. Now again, the reason that this is looking so extreme of an angle now is because you have to remember that the horizon line on my picture is lower, so we're looking up at more things. You want to picture yourself as you were on if you're the photographer, you were on your knees taking this picture with the camera pointed slightly up. You might even have been hunched over a little bit on your knees. <clears throat> so that's why everything kind of has this towering appearance, which I like in terms of drawing cities because, you know, it's like if you've ever been to New York City or any, any place that has like skyscrapers, they feel like they're towering over you. So you kind of, you know, if I'm drawing a city, that's essentially what I want to recreate personally in my picture. Um, but again, that's that's the thing that I'm aiming for. You could have a totally different goal. You could be drawing a car right now in perspective. Um, it's all about what your focus is. Okay, so I'm gonna do that for my overhang. I'm gonna cut that pretty short, like almost halfway from what I originally had. Bring this down. Okay. I want to think about this other side of the building first before I commit to fully drawing that overhang. I'm going to I'm going to come in here real quick and erase this person. It's distracting me a little bit. 
Um, and the more I look at him, the more I'm realizing that the pers I don't know why it does that. The perspective would be a little different. He would actually be a little higher. Why does it do that? My God, man, this program has got some bugs to work on. Okay. Just a little bit. I don't need them out that much. It's just a, that's just my sketch. Um, okay, so now back to the real drawing. Put my ruler back here. I want to. I think I'm gonna keep my original thickness of the building there. It looks pretty good to me. What I should know, actually, is because I have all this extra room off my page to figure it out. I do want to know where. The corner of these of this side and this side of the building meet up here um, because otherwise I'm gonna have to be guessing where this roof should go and it's not you could probably pretty accurately guess it but you're gonna get a much more realistic drawing if again you take the time to figure this stuff out and then now I have that corner and that corner's not going to appear in my finished drawing, right? But it's helping me now in terms of figuring out my initial drawing. Okay. And I'm going to draw this one down to my building line. And there it is. Okay, so now I have that side of the building. And I want to make this overhang like in the reference picture, right? I remember enough what it looks like, so I don't need to open it up. Because again, not exactly, I'm not trying to copy anything exactly here. I really want to get my own, um, no, no pun intended, by my own perspective on this picture. I want it to be my own unique thing. Okay, so I want to get rid of these guys now. So I have an overhang, but I have to draw some structure to the overhang, so we have to figure out a few things. We have to find the bottom of this. So I'm going to match this corner with my vanishing point. I'm just going to draw a line over. I don't know how long it's going to be, but it's going to let me know when I line this up. This this vanishing point, my left one, to the tip of that overhang, the furthest point away from our viewpoint at least. Sorry, I'm still fighting this ruler like I said in the beginning. Okay, and now I just need my straight Right here where those two lines intersect. And we'll put it down. All right. So let's take a look at that. That's looking pretty cool so far. I like it. It's like this kind of L flipped on its side building or something like that, right? Um, cool. So I'm just going to go ahead and, and I'm just going to draw another couple buildings, maybe one behind it. And one to the side of it, draw in the street lights. I know this is already getting pretty long here. And then we're going to call it there. I just pretty much want some block formations figured out. Um, these buildings, I, I want a little gap in between. I like showing gaps in between buildings because buildings don't usually, if you've ever walked through a city before, they don't usually just completely merge together. Um, a lot of times, these buildings were built at very different times. And so you don't always have that aspect of the buildings all being built together or alongside each other. <clears throat> and, you know, some of the buildings use the alleyways as access points for trucks, um, supplies, storage, shipments, whatever, right? Um, so these are all things that we can think about when we're trying to create our picture because these are little things like, you know, no one's going to look into the corner of my picture and say, I wonder if this, this business has got its shipment in lately or something like that, right? 
but it adds to the realism if me as the artist I'm thinking about that like I am trying to build this city as real as possible um, it really adds to what I'm trying to create here you know and what do I want here hmm. I think I want to show a building it would be fun if I showed a building that's lower down here just because this this angle is so extreme and kind of fun because the vanishing point is so close to the to the edge of the paper there that we get that angle that I really like and you can almost do something like really fun with it with like I don't know for some reason in my head I'm just thinking of like that kind of Japanese architecture where you have like the slanted roof and I just want to play with that idea I was gonna do that I need to find the center of this building so finding the center and perspective is the same as if you were doing one point. So I just need to find that X. Ugh, it's drawing wrong side of the ruler. Okay. My ruler was too close to this, so it was trying to think I was drawing a straight line. Okay. So now so you can see that this, the center of this building would actually not even be on on my page, but it helps for me to know because now if I want to draw, uh, God, this ruler is getting in the way. Get out of here. So if I want to draw like those slanted kind of rooftops that you see in like Japanese architecture, I need to be able to drape that off that center point. That's the weight bearing center point right there, right? So now it just kind of has like a little more interest and I've broken that whole straight and narrow kind of thing in my picture, but on purpose and it creates a visual interest to it too. And it, it needs, it needs, it needs, it needs this stuff to be straight in order for it to be interesting. So don't think just because I'm doing it that you're like, oh, so you don't need a ruler all the time. <laughs> Not the case, because this stuff is so straight and rigid and architectural, it makes something like this seem so much more interesting by contrast, right? It's the same thing as red against green and colors and a big, like, dark circle versus a small, really bright circle. Um, all contrasting things, right? So it, it takes place in many different forms. And I'm utilizing that to my advantage here. So just go ahead and draw that roof in like that. And you can really have as much fun with this one as you want. Like, I mean, um, if I'm going true Japanese architecture, like the roofs usually cascade up even higher, right? And then they start to get smaller and smaller. I'm not going to do that right now, especially because I don't have a real good reference for that at the moment. I would want a reference to make that look um, pretty accurate in my opinion. I, I wouldn't want to just kind of make that up, but for now that looks pretty good. I think that has a nice visual interest against the building next to it. Go ahead and come in here and erase this line. And I can erase my X. Again, you don't have to right now because this is just the um, oops, this is just the figuring out process, so Erasing this stuff is definitely not necessary at this step. Um, I'm just going to come back in and draw a little bit of a structure there. Oop, that looks a little off. Okay. So this is also what happens. I'm going to call myself on it right now. Um, call myself out on it right now. Um, I will get very distracted and caught up in the details when I'm trying to draw something that should be simple and just kind of basic figuring out of structure it happens to the best of us. Um, so let's go over here. I want to figure out what's going on with this 
right side over here. Do I want a building there? Do I want to leave it open? I kind of want, you know what I'm going to do? I have really settled on this light post right here. So for sure, for me, I'm going to go ahead and commit to this beam. It's pretty big. Okay, speaking of tangents, just because I brought them up earlier, I do want to say if I were to draw in the edge of this light post here, that's a tangent because this part of the drawing is lining up exactly with the edge of my paper, and that creates another visual tension point that we don't want in our picture. So I need to either commit fully to this light post is off the paper, like I am, or I need to move it even more so over and have it over here so then I can draw both sides. <clears throat> you don't you just don't want to get lines too close to looking accidental, right? Um, you always want to make it look like everything you did on your picture has a purpose. And you can definitely do tangents with a purpose too. I'm not saying you can't, but if you can avoid them, you should do your best to avoid them. Okay, just a little cleanup there. So, I have my light post here, and okay, what I want is I kind of want it to be like a park on the other end of this. So, what I'm going to do is actually just take my horizon line, draw a line there. Okay, and I'm just gonna add a couple trees in here. So like, I really want these trees to be in here, but also when I'm drawing this, it's just kind of like loose shapes right now, but overlapped by this here building. And then add some skinny trees in there. See some in the background. Okay. So I'm kind of thinking of this being like a park, and I'm not showing too much of the park, so maybe just like a couple. Maybe this one's like a pine tree, whatever, and this one's overlapping it. Um, these trees are coming down. You can see some of them coming down into the below the horizon line. Some stay on the horizon line because of the angle that we have. Um, a lot of that's just going to get darkened in and shadowed. Cool. Nice. All right. And then this is looking pretty good, guys. I'm about to finish this. I'm thinking that I'm almost done here. Let's look at it without the blue line real quick. Yeah. I'm seeing the structure. Um, the park's looking all right. I like my foreground for the most part. What I'm thinking is I need a couple street lights that are matching on the other side. Okay. I'm about to draw in a street light here and a street light here. And then we're going to call it for this one, okay? That'll be the end of part one. But let me just throw this on. Down a little bit. Okay. So originally I had this street sign up here, which means if it came down, it would be right there on the edge. It's not super realistic. What I can do is maybe, again, I want to avoid causing a tangent, you know, now with this edge of that building that I created. I can have it. Okay, now we can have it right there on the edge of the sidewalk. Why not? It's my city. I can do what I want. Um, okay, so I'm just going to put a pole here. Let's say maybe like this thick.
and then I'm just drawing it up there to the top right now because I'm not sure how big I want it. What I do want to look at is that if I'm claiming that the bottom of this pole is here, that means I now have given myself the information of where the bottom of this pole is, and I want to see if that makes sense to me. So what I mean by that is I'm going to take it the vanishing point, line it up with where I'm roughly saying the bottom of that straight pole is, and see, so now I have to decide if it makes sense to me that this one would be here. And I think that makes sense to me. So like it would look something like this, right? And then it would come up this way. And you might have your like walk, <coughs> your walk button right there, um, which we can actually incorporate that in there. I'm going to leave that there as a sketch just so I don't forget. Um, that actually, my walk would probably be higher. <laughs> See, this is what's going to keep happening. I'm just going to keep rethinking, rethinking, rethinking. Um, okay, and then now if I want to establish where the top of this one is, and it's going... Okay, if the top... This is a little confusing, right? But if the top of this one is going this way, that means it has to be going towards that vanishing point because everything else is going to that vanishing point that's facing that side of the street. So even though usually the tops of these um, signs are on an arch, we still want to get the basic direction down first. So that means that it would be coming somewhere here. Okay, and that's also, if I'm confirming that that's where the top is, that means that I'm confirming where I know the top of this one is, which according to this would be somewhere, let's see if I can get my mouse in here, somewhere all the way up to the top there, and I'm just thinking, I don't think that angle makes sense to me, that's a little, maybe that's a little too extreme, that'd be a very dull pull. I know I'm super zoomed down here, guys. Uh, if you can't see what's going on, just give me one second. That's a little more realistic to me. Okay, so zooming back in. Okay. Um, it's not too unrealistic to have it be a little bit higher. Because we do have to think that something like this pole which is what I'm kind of focusing on the height of right now, right, um, is in the extreme foreground. So it would have much bigger height in appearance to our visual eye um, to being higher. So hmm. I hate it because I actually kind of like the height that it created. Maybe I'll just, I'm just going to cheat it. I think I'm going to say just to make it a little lower and also to avoid this tangent right here. See, oh my god, tangents just happen and they're they just, they're so hard to avoid. They just keep happening. I hate it. That was my biggest problem when I was in school and people would call me out on it all the time. I get so frustrated. But necessary, right? Because I'm learning. We're all learning as we go. this because I want to get rid of that tangent I want to hide that I ever made that mistake it's a secret for you guys don't tell anyone it happened hmm. there we go and I know that the top of this would look something like maybe somewhere on this angle which means that if I race into this, it would just be something like this. It would be rounded at the top, right? It's a cylinder, not, um, you know, these poles in the ground are usually cylinders. They're not usually um, rectangular shaped. Not always though, you know, it's always gonna be different wherever you go. All right, so, now, in keeping in mind the whole tangent thing, 
I could say that the street post would be coming off this way. And if I draw a straight line down, it tells me where in the road that it would be over. Okay, so it'd be somewhere around here because I'm just trying to line up this with this. So from my perspective, I mean, I could totally, you know, use the whole X method and find out. But to me, that looks like the middle of the road. And if I'm thinking of street signs, they're usually in the middle. So, or like how far they reach out, they're usually somewhere out in the middle. So I will say I like that. And I'm just going to come in and draw the bottom thickness of it, which I want the bottom thickness to be a little thinner than the pole itself. Okay, keep you with that realism there. And again, we'll have like a street sign or something hanging off of this that will be also going in that direction, maybe a little smaller. Okay, I'm just kind of eyeballing that. Now, we can use this really quick to find the other street sign, and then we're going to call it for this one, guys, um, by... If I find the bottom of the street post and I take it over to here, I can decide where on this side of the road I want the street post to be. And I'm not always right there in the center. I think what I'm going to do is have it come out from right where I, if you saw me draw that very faint line, you might not have. It was right here. Okay. So somewhere there, I drew it higher than I needed just because I um, wanted to make sure I had the right angle to check how high it should really be. I'm going to use the top, line it up with the vanishing point. So this is another reason why you need the ruler, because the ruler is always going to show you where these things should be, right? So I was able to find that top really quick instead of guessing and things being off. And then I get frustrated because I drew my whole picture and I... Someone tells me, why does that street sign look so small compared to this one, and then et cetera, et cetera, right? It's all about avoiding that frustration. All right, just make this a little thicker. Okay, and if I want this street sign to be going out this way, it is going to be following this um, vanishing point to the left. I know that seems confusing. I had to think about it a little bit too. Let's try to draw it in there and see how it looks. Um, this is something that happens with two points perspective. You just kind of have to figure it out, think about it a little bit, what's going on. Um, and here's another tangent area. Sorry, I keep like now that I've talked about it, I can't stop talking about it. But here I need to make a decision again, just like I made with this poll. I need to make a decision that if I want to make this go completely into the poll and the, this poll is now overlapping it and in front of it, or if I want this to not be covered, I can't just have it be like eraser tools like not working for me I can't just have it be like super slight like that because again that's the problem that I keep talking about right um, I do like the idea of making it maybe a little shorter like that and then having a street sign somewhere in there or not a street sign a traffic light Um, yeah, this is looking good. And I can come in, guys, and I can, let's, you know, and I, maybe I come back and I want to add a whole bunch of, like, light posts going down here or something, right? We can do that. I have time to think about it now. We're going to call it for this time. Um, it's always good to actually take a break from your pictures anyways. So use this time. Study your references. Find more references. Um, if you have 
the opportunity. I know we can't really do too much of this right now, but if you do live in a city and you can look out the window or take a little walk and just look around for what you see in your natural habitat. I mean, of course, you might not even be drawing a, a cityscape. You might be drawing a room. So look at all the rooms of your house. Look at um, if you go to like Target or you visit a store, what does Target look like? What does the inside look like? What are some of the details you see, the posters, the advertisements? Um, you know, same thing with cars. What are the details? The grill. What does the grill look like? What is the, what kind of angle is the windshield at? Is it curved? Is it straight? You know, these are all the little details and things you want to start adding into your head and thinking about how can you add this into your picture, okay? So here's where we stand for now. I got my picture. It's going to crop, uh, let's say something like that, maybe. And, but for now, we're just looking at it like that. I like my city. And I'll see you guys in part two where we start adding some details to this, like windows, doors, and maybe some cars driving through, all right? All right, guys, thanks for watching.